Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Murray and I'd like to welcome you to the very first episode of a very exciting new program called The Gift of Giving. This program is going to be focusing on those angels and unsung heroes that are here in our local community of Nevada spreading the word about foundations, nonprofits, charities and that kind of work. But they're trying to make our little corner of the globe a better and brighter place for everyone. So to that end, I'd like to welcome our very first guest, Cherie Peterson, who is representing Warriors Suicide Prevention Foundation. Welcome to the program, Sherry. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy and hectic schedule, and I know it's busy and hectic, and being with us here today. Well, thank you for having me. I was very excited when I heard about the what you're trying to do here, uh, and we'll be able to feature a lot of people that you know the they are behind the scenes, but uh, yes, they really do make a difference. Absolutely, absolutely, and the program that you're involved in, uh, the Warriors Suicide Prevention Foundation, that's kind of an umbrella organization. I believe from what I saw on your website and from our previous discussions, there are four actual. Active. legs to this yeah. organization. Yes, there are. So would you like to give us a brief overview on the four of them and then we'll get into the specifics of them, okay? Uh, it started with 22 Warriors Foundation and they, you don't want me to say what they are, what they do? I'll or? just give a brief overview of yeah. what they do. So 22 Warriors Foundation was started by um, a retired uh, Army Ranger, Bill Emmel, and it was primarily for uh, service animals and for uh, helping with emergency care and things like that. Um, and then we have American War Mothers, which is, um, American War Mothers started in 1917 uh, and then it was congressionally chartered in 1925. So it was around a long, wow. long Gosh, time. that is a long time. Yes, and many of the mothers were actually uh, American Indian whose children had gone to war. So they're combat moms. That's the difference between, say, Blue Star or any of the other organizations. Our mothers are all combat moms. Some of them are gold stars that have lost mm -hmm. their children at war, and silver stars if they have their ch child has a purple heart, and then the blue stars um, that have served in combat. And then we have brain health warriors. So all the components of Warrior Suicide Prevention Foundation are that there's so many components to what makes people very, very sad or want to not be here sure. anymore. And a lot of uh, things that have to do with it is the first thing the VA sometimes will do is just throw pills at you. And taking medication because you're having night terrors or uh, because you're anxious or you're paranoid when you're around crowds, that's not helping anything. So we've always tried to look for alternatives. So Brain Health Warriors is Dr. Don Poston, who's a retired uh, Navy, and he does neural feedback. So mm -hmm. it's called training your brain, and it's mm -hmm. good for addictions, it's good for PTSD, and there are several things that it does, but it helps you in a natural way be the person that takes care of yourself yes. um, and actually train your brain so that you can take a traumatic in, uh, event that's happened in your life and you can move it around uh, in a way that it doesn't trigger you so heavily. Okay. So, uh, and one. then the last one is the newest one, which is the... Uh, Veterans, Vegas Veterans Hockey Foundation. And uh, Jason Grigio is in charge of that. He's retired U.S. Um, Air Force. And what's amazing about him, he's, got, he's quite a character, but he, like many of us know, you've got to get outside. Their yes. isolation is not good. And Absolutely. with us here having, uh, you know, our hockey team, the Golden Knights and the Silver Knights and Henderson, um, he's getting veterans and veterans' families to come out and actually play. Oh, so they great. yeah, so they make they get teams it's together. The athletic and, side. Yeah. So that they need that. Yeah, and it's, side. he's really trying to bring back the camaraderie that they had when they were serving. Because, you know, the the brothers and sisters that serve together are a very, very tight knit group and they trust each other. And so it, it makes it easier for them to get out if they know that that's kind of who they're with um, okay. while gotcha. they're out there. Cool. Now um you, you're um, a secretary for uh, this foundation. Correct. But you 
also the founder of the American Mothers. Yeah, the Aware as American well. War Mothers. I'm the president of the Nevada State okay. Organization. Um, and Would you like to tell us a little that's bit? How I met, a little bit of detail on that yeah, organization. I met Bill. Um, we we both had offices in the same Wells Fargo building downtown, um, and I ended up moving in with him after I, I got to talk to him a little bit because what I'm doing as a mother, I have questions from people that serve. My son uh, went in for 11 and a half years, combat medic. He had two tours in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. And the thing that the mothers were not talking about a lot was that when our children leave our home, that's not who comes back. So the person that true. comes back has been, has been is different, has changed. Sure. And mm -hmm. we're not sure how to act around them or, or what to do or what not to do or what to ask. If they're going to stay in the room and not want to come out, should we make them come out? You know, mm -hmm. what do we need to do? So talking to Bill helped me tremendously because it was like if it was my son <laughs> mm -hmm. that yes. doesn't tell me, he was telling me because yes. I wasn't his mom. Yes. Um, then, of course, I said, when was the last time you talked to your mom? And so, well, actually, it's been a while. And so he reconnected with her, uh, which made me really happy. And she yeah, became a part of... You helped each other. Yeah, she yes. became a part of our group. And she passed away recently. So uh, he sorry. had that extra time because they were here. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that they don't realize that when they're deployed, you know, they're out. They're busy. They're on missions and everything. But we know that we haven't heard from them in three months or you know how many days and how many hours and then they come back from a mission and it's like okay do I sleep uh, do I get something to eat or do I stand in line to talk on the phone or yes. use a computer and so we don't even realize that and then if they get married you know who they're gonna call it's not gonna be yes. mom yes so then that that's a whole nother dynamic that you have to then make sure that you and the wife get along so that you can yeah. hear more about how things are going. Yes. So as mothers, it was so helpful for us to try to heal ourselves. Um, so I mean, our motto uh, that's always been a part of us is helping, healing, uh, and caring You know about people. So that's what we're trying to do with each other. And then with that organization, we branched out into helping the homeless veterans. So the veterans that are coming off the street go through HUD VASH and mm -hmm. they find them housing when they're ready. So this is a program where they also have uh, ways of getting any kind of care that they need uh, if they don't have a driver's license or different things they need to need then and jobs. And when they get into an apartment, they have nothing. I mean, yes, they're off the street, but there's no furniture. Yes. There's nothing. So that's kind of a crack in the system that I hope eventually we'll get into the legislation and we'll be able to change that. But right now, um, we go to garage sales or we get phone calls and we pick up certain items that we know wow. and we work directly with the case manager so a veteran can't just call me and, and ask for anything they have to be in with their case manager oh, and I, gotcha. I work through them uh, we have a charity van that the foundation has paid for and um, we're in a, you know then I get volunteers if I help a veteran and he's healthy I will ask him to pay it forward and help me with the next um, delivery so that us moms in our 60s and 70s aren't lifting furniture as much as we used to. <laughs> sure. I'm well, still nor, doing nor it, though. should you. Nor yeah, should I know, you. but I, I keep telling myself that. <laughs> so how many mothers are there within your, your actual organization? We have over 30 members. The actual body, as in most groups, mm -hmm. is, is a core group of six um, okay. that do a lot together. And, and then we, when we have something else going on, then we get together as a group. Um, that's one of the things I'd like to reach out for is, is that uh, I think as the war you know, settles down and we don't have as many um, that are out in a combat area, there's still moms there that are trying to deal with who came back from war. Uh, and I think we can help a lot with that. Uh, absolutely, because I think sometimes, again, the, the veterans, we owe them a huge debt of thanks. There's mm -hmm. no question about that. But often what gets overlooked is the sacrifices made by the families, the, the parents, the, the sisters, the brothers, the wives, the husbands. Right. They're often overlooked and um, their needs are huge as well. And so when, when mothers call you, they reach out to you and they, they want to sort of find out how they deal with their sons or daughters that have just returned. Um, do they make multiple, do they, do they kind of, 
turn into being like a, you're a support group for them, the mothers as oh, well. Oh yes. Oh yes. So they will call you back frequently well, with questions. We'll usually go how do you deal coffee. with this? How do you deal yeah, with we'll that? We'll usually go meet for coffee or a glass That's of wine, right. and then I'll introduce them because it depends on on who needs to talk to them. For instance, um, my gold star mother, Marina Vance, who's my best friend, is a very um, dynamic, happy person. And she couldn't go to the Gold Star family group because they were always so sad. And her son was a happy boy and he wouldn't have wanted her to be sad. Yeah. So what she brings to the group is different because being in a Blue Star group, they're almost afraid to talk to the Gold Stars, like it's gonna, they're gonna catch it or something because their kid's over there. Uh, and, and, you know, again, with ones that have had an injury, you know, um, the Silver Star moms like me, it's the same thing. Yes. So we, we, because we share the same experience with them being in combat, it's just a different, tighter group because we have different, um, we have a different look at how, what's happened over there and, and how we can help them. And it helped me being around somebody that has PTSD, that has all of the things that signs that I see with all the veterans sure. that I'm around. So being around Bill, I can sound off him. You know, and say, can you help me with this? And you know, maybe Great. it's time that you stepped in and helped me. You know, so and I'm comfortable with veterans. My father was a Fulberg Colonel when he retired, so I'm a proud Army brat as well. So I had six brothers, so I'm really comfortable around men yes. in general. Um, so and I think um, I can make decisions easily, and uh, I'm a lot like my dad. <laughs> now the PS. Um post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. When the people call you, and I, I hope there are some viewers out there that are, are suffering with PTSD and need to talk to somebody, do you have, is it like a, f a phone bank of volunteers or do you connect them to psychologists or psychiatrists to help them? How, how, do, well, how we, do you deal with we that? We start with um, trying to get people that are interested, especially the moms and anybody else that has somebody that has served, uh, to take the Safe Talk class. Mm -hmm. And um, Bill is a trained um, person to be able to teach that class. And it's free. I think the materials are like $15. So it's great to get even like a bank staff to take it or anybody to take it because there's things you're going to learn in that class that are crucial in being able to help. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one of the things you need to do is actually ask the person you're worried about if they're, they're contemplating suicide or taking mm -hmm. their life. Because you'd be surprised, because nobody asked it, sometimes they'll tell you yes. Then your next question is, do you have a plan? Because if they have a plan, you need to get to them fast. Yeah. Because that's, that's much more serious. Mm -hmm. um, but what we have a general uh, number that I answer. Uh, it's it's through Grasshopper, so it's routed to me, mm -hmm. and you can ask ask for uh, Bill if if he's available, then he'll pick it up. And usually it comes to me, and I always pick it up um, for that reason because it could be somebody. Uh, sometimes somebody's calling me just because they've looked up and they've seen our website, and they're in Virginia. Well, I don't have any resources in Virginia. <laughs> no. So my immediate thing is is you know do you want need me to call somebody in your family or a, a friend to be with you, um, or I try to direct them to dial 988, which is the new number, and I think option one is for veterans. Oh, cool. You know, um, so I think that that's the most important thing, because they're all over the United States, and so they can route it to someone in their state. Uh, and every state does things differently. Of uh, course. And sometimes they just need someone to talk to. Yeah, so the listen. assist, when you, you can go from safe talk to assist, and that's, that's more than an afternoon. That's like two and a half days of training. Um, and they can actually talk someone down. So it, it, if I have a call that I'm concerned about, I'm going to get to Bill or somebody that's assist trained um, mm -hmm. because it's beyond me. Uh, I try to assess what I can do. Now, we do emergency care, so, you know, also, you know, if somebody's in trouble or uh, we are a resource center. So yes. To me, it's if I can't help you, I'm going to find somebody that, somebody can, that can. But I'm not going to just say, "Oh, sorry," you know. And and I think answering the phone is very important. I think that's uh, most people the world are shocked. Of difference. Yes, if so. <laughs> no answer the phone. Should, it's yes. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yes. Thanksgiving yes. can be a hard time. I get that. You know, no. for people. Let's we'll talk a little bit more about that. In the meantime, let's take a little bit of a break and commercial break and pay some bills, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello folks, this is Mac Jackson Jr. from Vanderson Cyber Group. The problem with businesses today is that they are affected by cyber attacks from around the world, but companies are not sure of what to do. Normally, they are reactive instead of proactive. But folks, cyber attacks can affect your bottom line and will affect you financially, legally, and your business reputation. Here at Vanderson Cyber Group, we can help you develop a policy by training your employees on what to do if they are involved in a cyber attack and how to mitigate it and fight against it. Folks, we call it here, hashtag stay cyber woke. And that's Vanderson Cyber Group here in Las Vegas and around the world. You can reach me, folks, at VandersonCyberGroup.com or my website, MacJacksonJuniorJR.com as well. Here locally, 702-868-0808. Give us a call today, folks. We must fight back. Thanks for coming back and joining us. And uh, Sherry, um, I did want to ask you, PTSD, that doesn't only happen to veterans. It could be like a mother who's had the misfortune of watching a car, uh, child get killed in a car accident or something like that. They also suffer from that. Can they call you or are you exclusive veterans? Um, they can call me too and I'll try to find them a resource. But with uh, Brain Health Warriors, I think that Dr. Don does mm -hmm. see patients because he sees children. Mm -hmm. So uh, because he specializes in that, and I, and I do believe in it, um, my son and my daughter have both been through um, neurofeedback. So I've seen what it can do gotcha. uh, firsthand. And he has a beautiful place up at Mount Charleston. He has seven bedrooms. So some, the, the VA has now... Um, approved of it so they're actually paying for it but some other insurances will as well so they could actually go up there for a period of time and go through and and learn how to do it and and how to and have one-on-one -on -one with the doctor gotcha. yeah gotcha. so that is open to, to other people yes okay and as far as Bill's organization goes what's how does his diff differ from yours obviously your mother's um, <laughs> and he's not but uh, his function is obviously very different from yours what does his organization do can you because uh, you're secretary of that organization yes so um, give us a little 22 bit of warriors that? it's you know it started with it was basically all veterans you know mm -hmm. so he does so many things because he himself um, found himself on the edge and putting a gun in his mouth. Oh, gosh. And it was somebody knocking on the door and asking him to come play basketball that stopped him. So he knew the importance of a knock on the door, a phone call. Um, so one of the things he does on the 22 Warriors site, because uh, we do have the WSP site, but we also have 22 Warriors site because it's the start, start for the mm -hmm. Nevada, um, that he checks on people. So he asks every veteran that he checks on to check on three friends. And, and, it go, and so it goes. So they have uh, a reminders. They're sometimes they're very funny if you look at the Facebook and, and see what they are about, you know, and check, let them know you've got their sure. sex, um, which is you've got their back, and, and mm -hmm. check in on people. Because when it goes through a period of time where you haven't heard from somebody, that's not necessarily a good thing. No. But they're not going to necessarily talk to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have a really good rapport. Well, they will talk to me probably because I'm not a family member and it's kind of frustrating to me because I can get a stranger to listen to me and not my own kid, you know, so. <laughs> well, you know, I, I used to work for a suicide prevention center and it was my experience that a lot of people call up, they just want really somebody to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, That's it. they're not necessarily suicidal. They just want somebody that's they're not a professional, they're not a psychologist, psychiatrist, they just want an everyday person who will listen right. and understand what they're going through. And you're probably dealing with the same. And I would suspect people don't always ask if they're suicidal because they don't really want to know the answer either. Yeah, you know? exactly. Cause it's and that surprised terrifying. me when I took the yes. class, it really did, you know, because yeah. I was like, I ne it never occurred to me that I should just do that. No. You know, and so, and it is hard to do. 
It is. Because you might get the an answer that now what are you going to do? Yes. You know, kind of yes. thing. So yes. um, I've had to pull over because I'm driving home and I'm taking a call and, and the next thing I know somebody's very upset on the phone and I've got to get off the freeway and pull over yes. so I can talk to them and see where they're at and see who's close by and if there's yes. anybody I can call yes. um, to get to them. To uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and I, of course our goal is to be able to be through all the states and, and have something set up a cri you know critical yes. crisis team that you can call and we have numbers for in every state would be great, mm -hmm. um, but it's not that simple. No, no, it isn't. No, yeah, and and I think that the other thing that's important is Las Vegas has a lot of veteran communities, and so the ones that I feel bad for are the Vietnam vets, the Purple Heart they're not growing because the way that they did things years ago was like go to the VFW, have a couple of drinks and tell war stories. Well, our young veterans are not going to do that. No. They need to be outside. They need to be kickboxing. They need to be riding a bike. They need to Same be doing things. something physical because of the adrenaline well, rush when you're in a yeah. war zone and you come back to this. Yes. That's very difficult. Um, and it's difficult for them to go in a room where they don't know anybody because they've been ever, you know, they're always vigilant when they're out there. Yes. So there's a lot of things that we found that the most important thing is to find which one works for them. Mm -hmm. And so you have Forgotten Not Gone, and they have hundreds of bikes that you can go out on, and they go out was, in the morning. I was going to ask you about to partner with other All organizations them, yeah. like Forgotten Not Gone that also helps yes. suicidal and MVP, veterans and yeah, so emerging veterans. You do partner with these other organizations. Oh, yeah. We, we love being all network. together. So yes. what Bill started was Second Tuesday. So the mm -hmm. Second Tuesday was a barbecue. Uh, we started it at the distillery, the Las Vegas distillery on Eastgate and Warm Springs. Um, the owner there, he was the first person to get uh, a license and he was from Transylvania. Oh, um, George Raz. Uh, and so every Tuesday, you just, you know, if you were a veteran, a veteran family, even a first responder, you're welcome to come. There's no agenda. It's just we're getting together. Mm -hmm. And so we're having barbecue. We have a raffle. We tell stories. I hop around the different tables and talk to people and find out what everybody's doing. If somebody wants to stand up and say, hey, next week I'm going to do such and such, you know, you're welcome to do that. But it was just non-formal way to kind of judge people how they're doing and see what they could do to help and sometimes they're coming to you because of somebody else and sure. gonna, and then you know I, I got a call yesterday from somebody saying where are you going to start them back up and I'm like it's September <laughs> because we took a couple months off yeah. um, so that that alone will bring in for you know the the people that are the founders of all these different organizations yes. and the Purple Heart guys and the Vietnam vets they are urgently looking for some younger people to come in and, and, and help. And help out. Because otherwise they're going to go away. Well, if, well, that's another thing I want to talk about volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. If people want to volunteer to help out, any, well, you're involved with four organizations here under this umbrella. Um, do they reach out to this one website, the, uh, for us, the for Warriors? Them. For us, yeah. um, Suicide Prevention Foundation. They reach out to you, and does it have little opportunities for each of those four organizations there is contact information on the website for, for each, each one of them. and and Perfect. then you can you can reach out um, there's so many ways to volunteer you know you have to you know everybody has some kind of a, a skill or, or something yes. they're good at I yes. believe that everybody has a purpose mm -hmm. and once you find that purpose and you're able to do it it brings you a lot of joy so if you are just really good at computers which I'm not um, and you really like social media, I don't have time for that. But we take pictures all the time. Did I get out there? No, not no. necessarily. But you can come in and volunteer, and that would be a really big help to me to, to get the word out because you volunteer sometimes, maybe get our website a little more professional and add oh. some pictures and videos and things. Um, there's That's part of the purpose of this program is to hopefully yeah. we'll help get you some volunteers, anybody who wants to And then I need some strong men. Some strong men. What to help move furniture yes. for the homeless? Absolutely. Yes. And I can I can do it where it's just like always going to be on a Saturday or a Sunday at this okay. time that we're going to be delivering furniture. 
Uh, and when you deliver the furniture, do you have the vans or, or things? Yeah, there? I have my van takes quite a bit, but okay. a lot of times the guys have trucks and we can take it too. And it, the vets are so appreciative. That's what of course. you got to understand is they're not greedy. They're not asking me for a color scheme. They're telling me they just need a lazy boy because they're disabled and they want to be able to put their feet up. And then I walk in and there's no dining room set. There's no dishes. There's nothing. So then I have on my <laughs> clipboard other needs and I'll go back sure. several times, times. so because heart. I know that they're gonna need some lamp you know when yes. you get an apartment now it's not an overhead light they need no. lamps it's quiet right. so until mm -hmm. they get a TV they need a radio they need something that makes noise it's too quiet when you're living yes. on the street it's noisy so that's that's too quiet you know yeah. and I want it to look like a home I want pictures on the wall you know I, yes. I want it to be and the people that donate to me the you know they're people that live up in Seven Hills or Summerlin or all over town Lake Las Vegas and they might have had a, a, a room that was just for guests and the beds were never used and the furniture wasn't sure. used so I have really high-end stuff that I would yeah. and that's what I'll ask when someone calls me you know Sure. How old is it? <laughs> <laughs> and for all you artists out there, if you want to do some paintings yes. and donate the course to hang on or these pictures, veterans' somebody, walls, photographers. Yes, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, it would be very, very welcome. Funding for your organization. How do you get your funding? Is it from donations, the yes. public donations mainly, or? Do you get government grants or anything like no. that? No, so I think some of the other uh, organizations do. Where we're, you know, that's that's a whole new field where you really have to get some training and how to write grants and and do that. And we never have the funds to pay a grant writer, and you can't take it out of once you get it. That's not legal. So no. <laughs> you can't say, okay, if you get me this much, I'll give you this much. That's yes. can't no. do that. No, so you have no, to no. kind of have it, and that's another For thing. Sure. If there's a grant writer out there that wants to give up writing a grant, you know, maybe once yeah. a year for a foundation, it would be wonderful. I'm sure there are some grant writers out there that will be more than willing to help, especially with the veterans causes because I think all Americans can feel for the veterans and their families. So Well, um, and we have like we had a, a very sad uh, a young man from Ohio that uh, committed suicide and he was only uh, 20 years old and he was Navy and his his family um, were getting him a service animal. So they wanted the money specifically to go to 22 warriors. So mm -hmm. we can earmark that, you know, I mean, that's what you do. So they started from the church and they would, it would always be in, in his name, um, you know, and I made sure I wrote back to grandma and everybody, you mm -hmm. know, thanking them for what they were doing um, in memory of him. Um, so, th you know, stories like that is just so sad because, you know, you look at this young man, you think, what happened, you know? For sure. What could, and, yes. you know, so I recommend books sometimes to the, the parents because uh, I've met some really wonderful people that have written books about, you know, The Day Before I Died, for instance, mm -hmm. which is written by a, a Navy vet. Um, and, and it talks about uh, how, why he's still here when mm -hmm. he was choosing not to be. So there's, there's ways of helping that you don't even know. But um, we do golf tournaments. We try to have regular. So you do have events. fundraisers yeah. periodically throughout the year. Yeah, we do. Do you have a mailing list where, because. Um, uh, Golf tournaments are always good fundraisers because there's so many golfers who live. Well, here and in that's Nevada. like Helix um, does two for us a year, and Helix chooses Helix uh, Electricity. They choose three veteran organizations, so there's three of us that benefit from that. So we go to it, of course, and we give out information about it. But they do all the hard work um, mm -hmm. for us. Uh, we do. Um, things at restaurants and we have silent auctions and we invite Great. people for those Great. but you know 22 warriors ask people if they would just give 22 uh, dollars on a regular basis that would help too you know because it's not you can't even get lunch for that <laughs> no no you can barely get a cup of coffee let alone lunch yeah so. <laughs> and 22 came from there are 22 um, veterans that commit suicide a day that's uh, on an average but that's not counting three states or the homeless. No. So it's that's actually a, higher. That's a very, very scary statistic. Yeah. So I think the organizations that you're involved with that are helping these people with PTSD is amazing. You are doing really amazing work. And, you know, we can never repay our debt. And you guys are really carrying the load. So I thank you for that. Well, we um, feel that our family serves, so, you know, my son serves, so I serve. Yes. Um, in his, yes. you know, for him and all the ones that are out there as a mom. Well, hopefully some of the viewers here today will be 
interested in volunteering or uh, giving a donation and hopefully if there are some people there with um, PTSD that they will reach out to you and it's been a real pleasure having you on this program would you like to uh, give out your information once more um, to the yeah, viewers I, I would go to um, wspfoundation.org warrior suicide prevention foundation dot org and um, it'll pop up and it'll show you each one of us and then you can click on whichever one you're interested in uh, and it'll give you the information you need if you call the number at the top it's an 877 number you'll probably get me <laughs> <laughs> and look for we have a new place we're going to be doing our 22 warriors things uh, that starting in September um, very excited about it and so look for that information oh sure coming well. soon Thank you so much for being on this show, Sherry. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you. You really are doing the Lord's work out there, and I yeah. thank you for coming on today. I'm, I'm very proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, John Stiles, the producer of this show, and WWDB-TV for allowing me to host this program. I'd like to thank our sponsors. And lastly, I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in today. I hope you will join us next week where our special guest will be Patricia Duffy from Foundation Assisted Seniors. Uh, that's going to be a great show too. If you have any comments or questions about this show, please reach out to me at stephen at thegiftofgiving.vegas. In the meantime, stay safe, have a fabulous week, and we hope to see you next week. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.